Hello everybody, it's Andy here from AM Media Games. So in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to uh, how to call or, or um, influence your materials inside your blueprints. Um, I've been looking around to see how many of these tutorials exist. I can't seem to find any in-depth ones or ones that are quite detailed or some of them are a little bit kind of non-explanatory and they don't really go into the right kind of information and it can be quite confusing for people that are new to Unreal. So what I wanted to show you today <clears throat> is my take on how to implement this and how to use it as beginner friendly as possible. So so what I mean is, so let's say this had a material on this floor and in a blueprint, like a blueprint actor, I pressed a button and it changed how emissive this material was or how uh, or the color, etc., or maybe even like a, a noise filter on the material. You could interact with that and change those parameters in a blueprint. So I created a material and I named this tutorial material. So right click material, um, you can do it here as well. Create basic asset, you can click material, and I just named it tutorial. Um, so I'm going to open that up, and in here we have nothing which will be the same as what you have unless you're using this in a pre-made or already created material then you might have something set up in these so what we usually do is we add a scalar parameter so hold S and left click um, and let's say we connect this into roughness <clears throat> now when we connect this into roughness if we were to make a material instance of this and by that I mean right click create material instance when we open this up you can see here that we can influence let me just apply it we can influence the roughness value in our um, material instance so this is a scalable parameter so you can scale it in the instance you can set a default value here and then you can adjust it um, inside the instance now what if we could <clears throat> interact with this in a blueprint so anything that you can apply a scalable parameter or a scalar parameter into one second <coughs> anything that you can plug one of these into you can plug this next object or this next node I'm going to show and that's called a um, parameter collection. So if we go into our content browser, we right click and we go to materials, you'll notice down here, we have something called a material parameter collection. If we click on that, let's name this one tutorial, uh, param collection, so I know what it is. If we open this up, this will give us an array um, where we can, implement scalar parameters so that would be these so anything that you can adjust with a numerical value and also vectors which will enable us to alter the color of an object so I'm trying to think of games an example when you when you create pieces of clothing in a game and then you have um, like a tool or a gun or a hammer or a building plan or blueprint of some sort and you can change the skin texture or color of an object with a click of a button that is basically how this works so things like rust where you can change it from wood to brick or brick to metal or metal to armored or games like enshrouded where you can have different colors on on objects um, and you can build your own different buildings and then change the uniqueness of each one of those pieces. This would be kind of the same implementation. Or let's say, for example, you have a, um, a in fact, a good example, one of my subscribers um, who is making his own games, who made a really good first game for his first attempt, um, it's called Ethel. Um, it's on Steam. He was trying to find a tutorial for a uh, voice recorder with a pulsing light. Now, this is another method to do it, 
um, where you can influence the emissiveness of a texture or material using the scalar parameters. So in here, we're going to type collection. So right click and type collection and we'll get collection parameter. Now this is basically this, but the only difference is this one can be called and tied into a blueprint. So if the object, let's create a quick mesh or blueprint. So let's go blueprint class actor and let's call this tutorial blueprint. So in here, if we add a cube and we scale this down so we can apply material to this. Let's close the instance. So in here we have our roughness. Let's give it a base color as well. So hold free and left click to get a constant free vector. Click that in there. Open up our mater uh, material color. Oops. And let's just give it a basic color of maybe white, for example. And we can see here we have values RGB all set to one. So these are our vector values for our RGB scale. This, these are what we would change in our um, collection parameter. So if we open that up, you can see we have vector. And if we open that up there, we can see we have our RGB values. So <clears throat> we can set a default in here and we can then adjust these in the game. What we can also do is set a scalable parameter so in our materials, we have this scalar parameter, which is currently set as zero in roughness. So we're gonna leave as is. We're gonna apply this material and save it. <coughs> and we can see here that we have our shiny white sphere. If we go into the level and drop in our cube, move this up a little bit and towards the camera. Um, oh, there we go. So we can see here that it's not reflective, but what we can do is drop our material on. Uh, wrong one, not this one, this one, yeah. Did I put the material on? Uh, let's do it in here, this one. There we go. And then compile. And we can see here now that we have this reflection, our horizon line there with our grid. And you can see it's taken on that roughness of zero, nice and reflective. Now, there wouldn't be a way to change this in game. Let's just say this didn't exist. There wouldn't be really a way to influence this node in game. We would have to do that through a material instance where we set the roughness per instance of the object. With this one, if we connect this, so let's go into our <clears throat> um, parameter collection. So that would be this one here with the x equals 1, y equals 5. We're going to click on scalable parameter and we're going to name this, drop down, we're going to name this roughness. Default value is 0. Yeah, bear that in mind. And we're going to name it roughness. We're going to click save. I'm going to leave it open for the time being. I'm just going to reorder these. So we're going to open our material and we're going to delete this one. Now, here is where it's important. So we've got tutorial param collection selected. Make sure that's selected in there, which is this one. Then we're going to click on parameter name and select roughness. We're going to connect the roughness in to our um, roughness input. So this is now outputting into our roughness, and this is now controllable in our blueprint. So if we go to event graph and we let's create a loop so we can see it happen. So let's cut, uh, set timer by event. And let's do uh, looping every, let's do it every four seconds or so. Looping, let's create a custom event. That's gonna go into there, and that's gonna go in there. Oops. Then what we want to do is we want to add some 
coding blueprint in order to control the material on our um, cube. So we're going to look for a node called set scalar parameter value, and that's going to go here, just like so. Then we're going to get an add timeline. <clears throat> this is going to be our roughness. And this is going to enable us to control that roughness. So here's a here's an example scenario for this. So let's say your character is interacting with a, a window or a mirror, uh, or they have an object of interest in their hands, which is currently dull, full of fingerprints and dust. And you want the, to simulate the, the character kind of wiping the dust away and making the object more shiny. Um, another example would be the uh, jet wash simulator on Steam, where you are removing uh, materials and swapping them for the one underneath. For example, this could be utilized in a way to do something, or achieve an effect like that. So we're going to do play from start, um, just like so. <clears throat> And we're going to put update in here. Now in here, we're going to create a float track. Right click, add key. This one is going to be zero, zero. Add key. This one is going to be, uh, let's say, three and one. Oops. I forgot to click enter. There we go. Press F to center. And then we'll do a nice auto smooth. So here we have our nice curve. We're going to name the track. Rename roughness value. And then compile and save. And then in our graph, let's get rid of timeline. <coughs> we have our roughness value. We need to select our collection. So we're going to click on our collection scroll down until we see tutorial parameter collection the one we just made and then we're going to select the parameter which is in this which is going to be roughness so when we select our collection it will give us access to that array then we're going to connect this into here just like so that's and that's that then we're going to click compile and save i'm going to go to event begin play and then out of here we're going to call this set roughness and we're going to call that event to go to our graphs drag drop so this will call it then this will loop it so this will keep happening let's do that compile it let's set a delay just so we can kind of visually maybe see it happen and let's set that to one second give us a chance to see it so let's zoom in here and click play and we can see as it plays, let's see if it works. Let's make sure I did that right. Yeah. Let's have a quick look. So we've got zero, zero, uh, over three seconds to one. Uh, let's quickly go into our event graph. Uh, okay, my bad. So this needs to be a little bit longer. So if this is every four seconds, and this is over three seconds, and this needs to be five, and that we can go, and then we press play. We should see here that the roughness will change on the material. Event begin play. Come on, Andy, what are you doing, mate? Let's make that block a little bit bigger. It's event begin play. I was simulating. It just wasn't working for me. So it should change its roughness. Let's make sure making me out to be a lion now isn't it play from play from start I 
I don't think I got to apply actually. Let's just double check. That might be the reason why. There we go. I forgot to click apply on the. <laughs> yeah. So if you notice closely the reflection, you can see there that it's panning through it like a timeline. So I apologize. I mean, I like sometimes doing those stupid mistakes when I'm tired um, because it's something that you may also do and then at least then you know how to fix it. But yeah, you can see here in front of me now we've got that that timeline panning through the, the roughness value from zero to one over a three second period. So you can see it shining. Let's see if we can make this a little bit more obvious. Let's also um, control maybe the color in some way. So let's do uh, emissive actually. So we'll do this one is also controlling the emissive. So let's see if that works. Uh, let's get our directional light, set that to one. And let's jump in and we can see there that it will go from zero to one, zero to one. Um, including the roughness so it's now controlling both of those values so that's how you would set up a material with a scalar um, scalar parameter collection and you can control the material inside of your blueprint actors which is really good um, maybe you want to go over a power up change the color of your player's armor maybe you want to when you get a power up, you want to add an emissiveness to a sword. Uh, I'm just trying to give some kind of use case scenarios, or maybe you're building a, a open world crafting game um, where you can change the color of your clothing. This would be a really good way, again, of setting that up. So I hope you liked the video. I hope it helps. I'm gonna quickly go over it again, just in case. So you're gonna create a material Let's do it in order. So create a material. You're going to create a, oops, not one, well, material parameter collection. In here, you can add a parameter, a scalar parameter, or a vector, which is for your RGB value, your color. <coughs> Once you've made that, you're gonna go into your material that you created. You're gonna right click, get collection collection parameter you're going to open this up make sure that you select your so this is this one here make sure you select it here so you can click that little arrow which is going to assign uh, the asset and then you're going to click down here to, to which parameter you want to adjust once you've set that up you're going to go into your uh, blueprint and you're going to search for a set scalar parameter value. So I hope the video helps. If you like the video, like it. If you dislike it for any strange, odd, bizarre reason, then lo and behold, go and dislike it. But yeah, so if you like it, like it. If you want to help me out, you can hit the subscribe button. Consider sharing it with other people to help them learn too. Um, if you need to or want to for any reason, donate to the channel because I've had a lot of people asking recently. You can over on PayPal or you can join Patreon and support me every month um, and I'll continue to support you guys. So thanks very much for your time. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.